ready for the Texans. They're a great team. That's where my focus is. I mean, there's no way to replicate, you know, what we're about to go up against. And that's why you got to go through it. What's up, guys? Welcome into Patriots Now. I'm your host, Courtney Cox. And, well, Tom Brady knows it, and so do you guys. It's here. Labor Day is over, and the weather is creeping back down to the 60s, which means one thing, football is back. That's right, the Patriots take on the Houston Texans on Sunday, and the entire team knows that they have their hands full, especially when it comes down to Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins. He can be covered, and he can make a great catch, so you got to really play physical with him and, and fight him to the ground. He does have good speed. Um, he can run through, but just got to kind of study the film to to know what you'll get um, from different splits, what to expect, and uh, just to read his body language. Yeah, he's uh, elusive in the pocket. You know, he's, he's a great player, so um, coach has got a good game plan in and got to execute the game plan. We knew we was going to have our hands full, and the good thing is we, we got some good tape on him, um, and we know kind of like what he likes to do, strength and weaknesses of his, so we're going to try to play to our strengths um, and try to make him play to his weaknesses. In 2017, the Pats escaped with a win at home, final score 36-33. to Deshaun Watson was a rookie quarterback who looked dominant, going 22 for 33, over 300 total yards, two touchdowns. He also had two interceptions. Watson continued the strong start to his NFL career before tearing his ACL in Week 7. Now he seems ready to go for his sophomore campaign not even wearing a knee brace on his surgically repaired knee. Don't know what that's like. I was a cheerleader and I wore my knee brace. But Watson also came back from an ACL tear while at Clemson. So watch out for fireworks from the young QB on Sunday. And when it comes to the Patriots, there's always lots of questions leading up to week one. So good thing we have Doug Kide to go through his mailbag to give you everything you need to know. Hello and welcome to this week's mailbag. If you want a question answered in the mailbag, shoot me a tweet at Doug Kide using the hashtag MailDoug and I might answer it or I might not. First question here comes from Tommy G 64010544. I guess 0543 was taken already. In regards to defense, what would Patriots have to do to take the defense from good to elite? I think it really all depends on those young pass rushers the Patriots have in their front seven. Derek Rivers, Dietrich Wise, Keontae Davis, even Adrian Claiborne, who's an older player that the Patriots brought in this offseason. I think that the Patriots can generate a solid pass rush this year, get after the quarterback. Then I think the Patriots defense can go from good to elite it's because I think the Patriots secondary is solid. I think their run defense will be strong this season with Danny Shelton and Malcolm Brown, Lawrence Guy in the middle there. I think their linebackers are going to be good as long as Dante Hightower stays healthy. So that's really the key, pass rush and keeping Dante Hightower healthy for possibly a full 16 game season. Second question here comes from GC Abreu 87 who asks, which will be Patriots Pro Bowlers this season? I think the Patriots Pro Bowlers will be Tom Brady at quarterback. That's a very easy one. Tight end Rob Gronkowski. I think right guard Shaq Mason will make his first Pro Bowl. Usually that comes when a player has a higher profile. The new contract that Shaq Mason got this offseason, I think, will raise his profile and actually get a lot more people voting him into the Pro Bowl. I think that if Dante Hightower stays healthy for a full season, he will be a Pro Bowler. Trey Flowers, if he can get double-digit sacks, he would be a pro bowler, and cornerback Stephon Gilmore. So obviously I'm assuming the Patriots team will be very good this season, that all of their, their pseudo stars will have breakout years. So that, that's my guess. I think I had six in there, and I guess I'd throw Matthew Slater in there too because he always makes the pro bowl. So I don't know, seven pro bowlers, that's a lot. They probably won't play in it anyway since the Patriots will be in the Super Bowl. So that will do it for this week's mailbag. If you have a question next week, send it to me at Doug Kide on Twitter using the hashtag MailDog. Thanks, Doug. Always great to have his two cents here at Nesson. You can follow along with him on Twitter at Doug Kide. But all right, let's talk injuries. The good comes with the bad. The week one injury report on Wednesday was pretty good. Nothing too serious. Limited participation includes Jawan Bentley. He is limited due to illness. Duke Dawson with a hamstring. Dawson has been placed on injured reserve. How about tight end Jacob Hollister? We've seen a lot out of him during the preseason. He's limited with a hamstring. Sony Michelle with a knee. Two players that are full participation. Marcus Cannon with a calf and Nate Ebner with a knee as well. 
Hoping that we keep the Pats roster as healthy as possible. One guy who has seen a lot of injuries, yeah, that's Rob Gronkowski, who's made it a point to take care of his body, and well, the Patriots are taking care of his bank account. On August 30th, the Pats reworked Gronk's contract. They added $4.3 million to his contract this year, added $1 mil in per game bonuses, and $3.3 mil in incentives. That boosts max value to a whopping $13.05 million. Interesting here though, the Pats named their captains. Gronk, not on the list. Two spots that were occupied by 87 and Dante Hightower are now occupied by Patrick Chung and James White, along with Tom Brady, Devin McCourty, Matthew Slater, and David Andrews. Whew, Tom Brady, a captain again? Is the Pope Catholic? Both answers say yes. And I'm saying yes to Gotham Chopra, who gave the people what they wanted, giving us a five-minute epilogue to Tom vs. Time in which Brady talks family, retirement, and how he can block out the drama and criticism in New England. I say retirement, and I can hear the gasps from fans. Relax, relax. Brady has stuck to a story that he wants to play for another five years. Make sure to note that it will be extremely hard, but hey, he thinks he can do it, and we think you can too. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's not talk five years, let's talk about year one and week one, which brings a lot of jitters for players and fans. Fantasy teams are no joke, and to tell you who to sit or play, here's our very own Darren Hartwell. The Patriots and Texans will be doing battle on Sunday, and it's going to be a pretty intriguing matchup, a lot of firepower on both sides of the ball, which of course means that fantasy football owners will be heavily invested in the outcome. Of course, there are a lot of questions about the Patriots, fantasy-wise, specifically What's the status of rookie running back Sony Michelle, and who the heck is going to catch passes on this team outside of Rob Gronkowski and Chris Hogan? So we're going to try to break that down and answer a few of your questions with some starts, sits, and sleepers for both New England and Houston. You're obviously starting Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski, and I think Chris Hogan is a lock too, considering he's the number one receiver in this offense with Julian Edelman suspended. Outside of those three, things get a little dicey. If Rex Burkett is healthy, I think he's worthy of a start, but it's a pretty tough matchup against the Texans' front seven, which welcomes back a healthy J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless. I'm steering clear of Michelle this week. Bill Belichick has mentioned throughout the week that his injury has put him a little bit behind the eight ball, so it might be a while before he really gets involved. I'm also sitting Philip Dorsett, unless I'm in a deeper league. Houston has a pretty solid secondary that just added Tyron Matthew, and I just don't see him contributing in a big way right out of the gate. My sleeper to watch is James White. He's really been involved in the passing game this preseason, and it seems like he's Tom Brady's go-to security blanket in short-yarded situations with Edelman out. If you're in a deeper PPR league, I'd give White a spin. The Texans' fantasy situation is a little more straightforward. Obviously, you have QB Deshaun Watson and wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, who are bona fide fantasy studs. And running back Lamar Miller is a solid RB2 against the Patriots defense that allowed 114 rushing yards per game last season. The only real question mark is wide receiver Will Fuller, who's been battling a hamstring injury and hasn't played in the preseason. But if he's good to go, I think he's worthy of a start. Apart from that quartet, the Texans really don't have any viable fantasy options. Seriously, if Sammy Coates is on your roster, you're doing something wrong. I'm Darren Hartwell, and that's your Fantasy Football Minute from Foxborough. All right, well, that will do it for this episode of Patriots Now. Thanks so much for tuning in. And game time at Gillette is 1 p.m. on Sunday. Weather for kickoff is looking like a perfect 65 degrees. Get there early to start your grills, crack open a few beverages, and be sure to catch our Patriots pregame Facebook live show at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday. We'll be there. Come say hi. Bye, guys.